So yes, it's all about dropping some fat, but more importantly, it's about getting authentically healthy and weight just one of the symptoms. So if all you want to do is lose fat, this is all you need to do in the next 30 days. Literally, science proves it. If you do these six things for the next 30 days, you will lose fat. And I know this for certain because I've been helping people lose fat for over 25 years, drop fat and never find it again. In fact, here's some fat right here. There's five pounds of fat and we can throw that away, get rid of it. We don't want that. But honestly, the physiology of losing body fat is not as complicated as we've made it. And the reason we made it so complicated is so we can monetize it. We can all sell our best method. We can all tell you that this way works better than this way. And the bottom line is, if your fat burning machinery is turned on, all you have to do is consume fewer calories than you eat. That's it. If your fat burning machinery is not turned on, you can turn it back on by eating 70 gram of protein a day and don't eat after seven for 30 days. Just doing those things is going to align your body's hormones with your circadian rhythm and that alone is going to get your hormones back in alignment. Now, is this the most effective way for you? No, everyone has a more effective way, a way that they need to do. If insulin is too high, it's going to be hard to turn the fat burning machinery back on. So avoid insulin and elevating foods. Move your muscles for 30 minutes a day. Sleep for seven hours each night and drink 100 ounces of water each day. But guess what? I don't think I'm telling you anything you didn't already know. That's not the problem. And that's what I've learned through all these years of helping people get healthy. It's not knowing what to do. It's actually doing it consistently enough that it becomes a habit like brushing your teeth instead of something you must do, or you better do or else, or I hope I get around to it or feeling stressed because you're worried you won't have time to do your workout. When it's not aligned and you have negative emotions around it, negative beliefs and negative feelings about it, it slows the whole process down. That's where the biology of belief in epigenetics comes in. I've helped people lose 20, 50 pounds within six months and they did it on their own. They had their meal plan, their fasting schedule, and they gained it back. Fat regain is the same recidivism rate as prison. People that go to, in prison, 80 to 90% of them go back. Same with losing body fat. 80 to 90% of the people who lose body fat and get healthier gain it back. And it's not because of lack of willpower. It's not because they don't know what to do. Here is the hormone causing the most trouble. Yes, you need growth hormone. Yes, insulin needs to be down. It'd be great to have lots of estrogen. And for me, a guy, a lot of testosterone all the time. But cortisol is killing people. It impacts high blood pressure, high blood sugar, which makes it so fat gain is very, very common. And when you think of cortisol, you think of stress because it is a stress hormone. So we know we're stressing too much. But we don't know what to do about it, except stress less, I need to relax more. It never happens. People are getting heart diseases, issues with memory and attention. And really importantly, it's suppressing the immune system and digestive issues. The most important hormone we must take control over is cortisol. It's not because our hormones are jacked. It really isn't. The hormones, I learned all about them, learned all about hormone metabolism. It's because they don't shift their inner energy and align it with their bodies. When you do these actions, plus you make a shift inside, that's when it becomes longer term. So most of you won't do this for 30 days. And the ones who do, if you are anything like another human being on this planet, unless something shifts on the inside, you're going to gain it back. But this is, in case you haven't figured this out about me, weight loss is just one of the symptoms I help you get through. This is way bigger and way more important than just weight loss.
way more important than just losing the body fat. This is about aligning with your purpose, your true self, and your true health. And this is the solution to anxiety, depression, PTSD, addiction, health issues. And the good news is, even one of these people who aren't going to do it, like right now you're thinking, yeah, I'll do this. But somehow you kind of are going to fizzle dizzle by day two or three. Or you're one of these people that are, why bother? I gain it back anyway. You're not alone. We all have these three states. One, we're aware of who we are and where we are in life. And let's just use, for me, my first big one was overcoming my addictive traits. I started learning this years ago and have worked with several experts to help me. I paid them to help me. I've studied several books. And when I learned about neuroplasticity, epigenetics, and the alignment and the energy body, I said, whoa, only if I would have known about this sooner. It applies here. Our physical health, mental health, emotional health, relationships, and finances. So we, A, know where we are. We're aware of where we are. And B, we know where we want to become, where we want to go. So we'll let B stand for becoming, and we'll let A stand for where. So if you've ever seen someone lose a bunch of weight real fast, keep it off, show their pictures, you're like, how do they do it? Or somebody go from being barely able to pay their bills to having a surplus of income and all the money they need going on vacations, how do they do it? Truly successful people in life, and by success, I'm like authentic success, encompassing your potential, letting you show up as your best self, and for everybody it means something different. Those people, and we all have done this, they go in a straight line from A to B. They don't do a bunch of detours. They don't get stuck. They know what it takes. They know what actions they need to do. They do the actions. They keep repeating the actions. And somehow along the way, they change their inner stance, their inner state, their inner energy. That's why they're able to stay at B. Awesome. Maybe someone helped them. Maybe they had such a strong life experience. Usually it's a loss, a uh, divorce, losing all of your money, your house burning down, losing a loved one. And there's a lot of things that can trigger it. And we're all can relate to these. We're aware we're 50 pounds overweight. We want to lose 50 pounds. We're aware we have 50 pounds to lose. And I'm just using weight gain and weight loss and fat loss as an example, because it's really easy to measure and see. But we start going and then Let's see, I'm gonna get fancy, make it a bit of a smaller pin. There we go. Then someone tells us about this new keto or this new intermittent fasting or this new paleo or this new way to do your hormones. And we go in a loop getting more information. And then we hear about this other way to do it that works even better. And we go in another loop and we get more information. And then we hear that we can do it without even dieting or doing anything different with our food. And we go in another loop. And then a friend tells us that we go join their gym, that we'll totally lose the weight. It'll be all better. And then we see this thing on ketogenesis. Oh, man, we're stuck in this information loop of just collecting information and not making any progress until some more information comes and we start looping again. Not sure what to do because there's so many good ideas. These are called the loopers. We never get to point B because we're looping. Also done it. It's when our mind is distracting us from our actions. Oh, I just need everything to be just right. I need to make sure I'm doing it right and have everything outlined. And okay, I need to make sure I have this, this, and this. And I have to go shopping first. And there's a loop. Aligned action. Straight line, aligned action. That's what you want. When you know what your actions are, because you decided those are your actions, this is the path of least resistance. Take that back. This is the path that makes you go straight through your discomfort zone. <laughs> this You go straight through it. You don't get to loop around it. So it does feel uncomfortable because you're going into unknown territory. But when you take aligned actions towards your objective, your intention, and you do it in a straight line, that by simple geometry is the quickest way to get from point A to point B, straight line. All right, now here's the other type. By the way, I'm guilty. 
I am uh, I fully identify with all three of these types. I've been all three in different areas of my life. The one area I've been pretty straight line in my whole entire life is my physical health. And that's because of my beliefs, my habits, and my purpose and desire. It really all aligns. And pretty much every other area of my life, though, not so much. I've looped and I've done the other one. So catch yourself always. Am I looping right now? Am I a looper? Okay, here's the other one. Very, very common. I'm going to lose this weight. I've got this program. I've got this friend to work out with. I got so motivated. I'm tired and my clothes not fitting. Ah. And you get motivated and you start moving forward, moving forward, and then life happens. And you zag back. And then you zig again because now you're determined, you're determined, you're determined, you make more progress. Ah, oh, but then you zag back because then life happens again. This time you, your car broke down. This time you couldn't get to the grocery store. This time you had a fight with your husband or your friend or your kids. And oh, big reason, zags you back. Now this time, oh man, you're, you're getting back on. I'm, I'm going to do a reset. You start going. Oh, but guess what? Life happens again. And this time it's really catastrophic. Someone in your family dies and it's just like, oh my God, I can't believe it. And so guess what? Your desire, your intention goes out the window and you zag back. These are called zigzaggers. I'm asking you from now on to ask yourself at any point in life, whatever you're doing, ask yourself, am I straight lining? Am I aligned? Straight line alignment going towards what I want? Am I looping? Or am I zigzagging? That awareness will open up new possibilities for you. So it's awareness. It's you being aware of where you are and what you're doing. My goal is to help you all get on a straight line. Because here's the reason we avoid the straight line. Our old self, may, for me, it's old programs, old limiting beliefs, old relationships with money and with relationships with my significant other. I mean, it goes on and on and on. That's my old self. I want to become my new self. And if we're going to simplify it and use fat loss as our objective, our old self is 50 pounds of fat they don't want. Our new self, which is really, which is really, 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 let's see what color I should use. I'll make it big. I'm going to use color orange. Yes, I am. I know it's fancy. This is our true self. All right, so now hopefully I can write. Yes, true self. And I wanna talk about this, your authentic true self. It's been inside you your whole life. It's part of your purpose, part of your desires, part of who you are, your authentic true self. So all we wanna do is get into a straight line to our true self. That's straight line alignment. But we have to go through the unknown, the void. We have to go into unfamiliar, unpredictable future. We don't know for sure how that's going to feel. It can be really uncomfortable, really scary. It can make us feel like, ah, this doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel right. This feels so, uh, it just doesn't feel right. It's because it's new. It's going against all your old programs. And we have to be uncomfortable to get back to our true self. We have to go through uncomfortable. Some people call it the the river of progress, the river of growth. But in order to get from where we are now, which is very familiar, very comfortable, very predictable, to the person we know we're capable of becoming, where our creator made us to be, that we can just realign with, we must go through the unknown, the void, and experience unfamiliar, uncomfortable, unpredictable. That is the meaning of change going through the unpredictable, the unfamiliar, get back to your true self. Good news. Maybe you know you've had a purpose, a desire. Maybe there's something in life you've really wanted to accomplish. And you have given up because nothing you've tried has worked. And oh my gosh, we just accept it. Oh, I guess I'm never going to accomplish that. I'm never going to be there. I'm never going to get to that point. Well, you can Epigenetics, neuroplasticity, human energetics, they give every one of us permission to live 
the life and the body we've always desired. You have permission to do it. Science has verified it's completely possible. And I didn't write quantum mechanics there because that might freak some people out, but guess what? It's involved. Deep down, we all know we desire a certain greatness in our life. Maybe it's to be the most amazing writer, the most amazing singer, the most amazing hiker in the desert. Maybe it's to be the most, maybe you wanted to write a book. Maybe you want to help other people, you know, sharing what you have going on. Oh my gosh, there's going to be so many things. But we give up on our purpose and our desires because we don't think we're capable of it anymore. We're too, we're too old. It's too late. I blew it. I messed up. Not true. But you will have to change some things going on in a deeper level. And it's possible. Science has now verified it. What is epigenetic genetics? I thought long and hard about presenting this in a way to not make it boring, but also hopefully to get the point across. Every cell in your body, every cell has DNA. DNA has billions and billions of information centers. The inside of your DNA is fixed. You can see this inside part. Can't change it. It's your gender. It's your height. That type of stuff. The outside of your DNA, that's why it's called epigenetics. Epic mean, epa means outside. Completely malleable. It's changing all the time. We get to decide how that part of our DNA is going to show up. So you can have genes to get a disease like cancer or a disease like MS. You can have those genes, but you can keep those genes deactivated by your life decisions and by um, some factors I'll show you. So when weight loss and fat loss is concerned, nutrition, the amount of lean muscle you have, your hormones, your beliefs, your sleep, and your lifestyle can turn on and turn off your obesity gene. You can turn them off. Because if you're doing everything right, but your genes are still replicating, because your cells, they die and they replicate, and the cells that replicate all depend on your DNA expression at that time. So the cells that are recreating are all because of your DNA expression. So changing at an epigenetic level changes the health of the cells you're replicating. And you'll have healthier cells. If you have an issue with your body weight, if you have an issue with energy, if you have an issue with any function in your physical body, metabolic syndrome, cell dysfunction is occurring. It's breaking down at the cellular level. It starts at the cellular level. And I can go on and on nerdy style about this, but instead, I'm going to show you what you can do about it. Now, the thing that's really come to science recently is the, the amount of impact your emotions and your state have to do with it. But here's the thing. Our brain, our minds, only 5% of what we decide to do is an impact of our conscious mind. Our prefrontal cortex is really smart, can be creative, figure things out. Everything else in our body, everything else in our life is running from the subconscious mind. Now, in our subconscious mind, we have positive programs and we have negative programs. We have positive memories, we have negative memories. When that you have that stored emotion with a story around it, it becomes a program. Programs like I'm not good enough, I can't do it, I'm not as good as everyone else, I need to prove myself, I need to please others in order to be loved and accepted. There are programs in our subconscious that have been around since we were before we were seven. And I did lots of research on me because I want to know why I was so Cray, cray, crazy in the head. Turns out my mom was uh, in a very much fight or flight situation when I was in the womb and she was doing drugs when I was in the womb. It was like, no wonder that I, my natural state is fight or flight. So it started in the womb, continued through my childhood and adolescence. And I could easily say 
No wonder. I should just do a bunch of crime, be lazy, uh, do drugs all the time. Just keep doing that. I have every reason. No, I can change my neuroplasticity, my epigenetics, and I have. And it's just ongoing awareness and a decision to change. But know that your conscious brain, the one we think with, is only in charge of 5% of the show. All right. Nutrition, hormones, your energy coherence, your belief biology, your muscles and movement, and lifestyle shifts. This is how you can not only lose body fat, but also how you can shift almost anything in your life to get to point A to point B. But you have to make changes in your biology of belief. We all have old beliefs that are running the show and they're absolutely holding us back. And here's a quote, we question every belief except the ones we truly believe. That means if we have believed it for a long time and it's such an inherent belief, we're not open-minded to anything else. We get into a fixed mindset and we get stuck in that program. Your beliefs came about just like mine. You had a life experience and that life experience was combined with thoughts and feelings, intense ones. And the thoughts, the neurochemicals from your thoughts and the neuro and the chemicals from your feelings, they create a belief that gets hardwired into your subconscious. And then I call them your self-protective beliefs because they're trying to keep you safe. They're a program to never let that happen again. If it's a positive experience, then you go towards that in the future. You want more of it. But if it was a negative experience, you try to avoid it. These beliefs are what's keeping you stuck. More so than what you eat. The reason you eat the food you eat and the reason you don't exercise when you know you should is because of those programs. Here are some common ones. I can lose weight. It's too hard. I'll never change. I'm not good enough. I'll never find love. My life isn't very good. I don't deserve it. I'll never find the right job. If we're running those programs in our brain again and again, it's releasing the cortisol type hormones into our body again and again, and it's affecting our epigenetics. This is where it gets interesting. Your brain is an organ just like your heart, just like your arm. Your brain is, without the programs, your brain is just another organ. It's nothing fancy without the programs. That's why all of us do different things with our brain. It's all about the programs we choose and the thoughts and parts of it we use. So knowing how everything in the brain works is not as valuable as knowing what programs you have running and what programs are aligned with your purpose and your objective and which ones aren't. Okay, so I want to talk to you about states of mind and body. Because the rest of this talk almost is going to be about your inner energy, your inner state, your inner stance, how you exist in the world. And you can either exist in a state of love and light or fear and stress. Love and light, you'll experience such emotions and values as connection, tolerance, acceptance, gratitude, joy, enthusiasm, inspiration, peace, abundance, service, fear and stress, isolation, judgment, worry, Am I right? Overanalyzing there. Overanalyzing is a big one. But both of these have completely different impacts on your epigenetics and your hormones and your inner stance, your inner energy, and your inner body. This is very important to know. You are either going towards, I'll call it the divine state or the fear and stress state. Don't worry, there's more. So, two states of mind and body. When you are in the divine state, creation, homeostasis, expansion, anabolism, health, order, repair, regeneration, love, joy, trust, gratitude, selfless, no more, no thing, no beyond, no time. Energy is created, growth and repair. This is the state where we heal where we achieve, and where we become our true selves. Unfortunately, 
we spend a lot of time in the other state trying to survive we're stressed we have dis-ease breakdown regeneration energy loss always an emergency always rushing always focused on the material world and never on our inside energy and that's just like an animal those are animals those are the same instincts an animal has just to survive just to do the next thing looking for the next dangerous thing so when we align with our true god self our divine self our authentic light we will experience a different feeling in our bodies and a different level of health so here's how epigenetics comes in stay with me everyone hopefully we're all comfortable enough to say a word like god for me god means god get over defining it it can also mean the quantum it can mean the universe higher power source it's the energy that gives life to every being it's the energy that connects us all and is in us all and so if i say god it includes your religion if you're religious and if you're atheist it includes the energy that wakes you up in the morning just think of it like that at the highest level and say some people call this 5d in quantum mechanics and new age we have what we don't completely understand. That's why God for me is get over defining it. Spent a lot of years trying to figure it out. And, but there's a higher power that we can connect with, but not when we're thinking. Our thinking mind cuts us off from it. That's the important thing to remember. Now down here is 3D. This is the part that we're all focused on. How our bodies look, how our bodies feel, how much money we have, it's our DNA, it's our cells, it's our hormones, it's our blood, muscle, fat, organs, nerves. When I talk about DNA, 5% fixed. So we're all living in this 3D world in our physical bodies. Now we can't just go, okay, God, you have me, you want me healthy, why can't I just go from there to there? Why can't I just take the authentic program you laid out for me and just map it out on my body now? Because everything goes through the most important part that we're going to talk about today, and that's your inner body. That's where your inner stance exists, your emotional frequency, your energy coherence, your beliefs, your thoughts, your emotions. Everything must go through your inner body. It's also known as your inner stance. It's known as how you exist. This inner body is how you can heal your body, your finances, your relationships, your hormones. Your inner body is where the change occurs. This is everybody's lowest hanging fruit. This is where you improve your life, your inner body. And if you want to break it down, it's your beliefs about yourself and about the world. It's the thoughts, it's emotions, and it's actions. So becoming aware of what's happening in your inner body is the most important thing any of you can do. How am I feeling? Where am I feeling it? What am I thinking about? Where's my attention going right now? That level of awareness will raise your consciousness and help you elevate where your energy coherence is much healthier. This is all connected. So inner energy, your inner state is your beliefs, what you're thinking, your desires, your actions, how you perceive yourself and how you perceive the world, how you feel. When you become aware, let's see, I'm going to use green. Nah, I'm stuck on orange. When you become aware of your inner state, your state of being, that's when you can start making shifts. So even if you did everything right, took all the right actions, and you lost 50 pounds of fat, unless this inner energy, this inner state of being changes, you will gain it back. And one of the big reasons is because between the level of your inner body, right here, I'm going to circle in orange because it's so special, and your physical body, I'm going to circle this in green. I'm not sure why. No, nope, that wasn't green. There lays a layer of epigenetics. That's where the epigenetic shifts occur, and that's when your DNA and cells and your organs and your 
body starts creating something new, something better. This is the secret sauce. Epigenetics is a line between your inner body and what's going on. So, changing your beliefs, becoming aware of what you're thinking about, with how you perceive the world and how you're feeling, that is the key. All right, and by the way, if you have any questions about any of this as we're going, type them in the chat because I'm going to answer all the questions in the chat when we're done. I don't want any questions to be uh, ignored. Just type them if they come up. Our brain is like a supercomputer. And throughout our life, we've built programs in our brain. And they mostly exist in the subconscious. These are click-run programs. So an example would be somebody... Okay. Look at the scale. The number went up on the scale. It runs a program automatically. Automatically, thoughts start. Feelings start. And usually it's something along the lines of uh, failure or the world's against me, my body's against me, it won't work for me, doubt, stress, and fear. All of these programs automatically fire off. They're called click run programs. You click it and it runs and it takes off on its own. And the longer that feeling runs, it changes your inner energy state, it releases different hormones in your body, and it impacts your epigenetics. We all have click run programs. You have a click run program to brush your teeth. Pick up the toothbrush, toothpaste, put it on, click run. You don't have to think about brushing your teeth, you just do it automatically. You have a click run program for driving your car. You have a click run program when your husband or wife looks at you sideways or talks to you in a way you don't like. It automatically runs a program. So becoming aware of what a click run program is and which ones are working against you is key to changing your inner body. And most people can identify one or two at a time and work on those, but realizing that we actually can do something about it. And it's through neuroplasticity and epigenetics. So here's how you do it. Here's the solution. Become that's an E, very big E, kind of tall, that E. Become the observer. That means you're going to raise your level of consciousness. You are no longer your body, your thoughts, or your emotions. You are a higher level of consciousness observing your body, your thoughts, and your feelings. You're observing what's going on. Ah, look at that. I'm running that program again. Huh, that's... There it is, there's that program. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn that program off and do something different or just create space and be quiet with it, but not let that program keep running. But if we're identifying with the program, we think we are the program and we don't become the observer of it, we won't be able to change it. So the solution is become the observer of your body, of your emotions, of the way you feel, and especially the thoughts you're thinking and the click run programs that are just going on default and running in the background. Otherwise, you keep thinking the same thoughts and you keep making the same decisions, same choices, and then you're doing the same actions, same experiences, same feelings, and guess what? Nothing's changed. Or decide to think a new thought new choices and you know with the new thought higher than the thought would be the belief that's powering the thought new actions new behaviors new experience and new feelings so don't wait till you feel like it don't wait until you feel like it take the action regardless of how you feel and say i choose to stop eating by seven o'clock I'm choosing to stop eating by 7 o'clock. You want to eat, you want to eat, you go start to reach into the refrigerator, you stop yourself. I'm choosing to stop eating at 7 o'clock. And every time you resist the urge to go get some more food, you remind yourself, I'm choosing to stop eating at 7 o'clock. I'm choosing to heal my body. But you reinforce that new thought, that new belief, that new program. 
And there's lots of ways to do this. And that's a pretty simple one, but you actually have to observe, stop the old program and reinforce what you're choosing. Aligning with your inner self, your inner energy is going to change your epigenetics. And here's how you do it. Number one, get clear on your purpose. And your purpose is not an outcome. Your purpose is the feelings, your primary and secondary feeling that there's an exercise in the course that teaches you how to find your purpose, but it, your purpose is not something you achieve. It is a feeling you become and it becomes your go-to feeling. When you figure out what that is and you always align with that feeling, oh man, it creates opportunities and aligns your inner energy and makes it so you are more on the straight line. So if you've not taken the time to identify your purpose, start there. Next, identify what you authentically desire. Desire is different than a want. A want is something, a craving is something that, uh, you don't really need it, but you want it anyway, and you kind of whine and complain if you don't get it. A desire was put inside you by your creator. Your purpose put inside you by your creator, your desire. And we have desires. So our creator gave us those desires when we were born. We can't feel bad about them because they're there. We can't pretend they're not there because they're not going away. We can numb ourselves, distract ourselves, but they're still there. Our creator also gave us skills and personality traits to fulfill that desire. So if you have an authentic desire, and you know it is authentic, then your path, your alignment beam is to follow that desire. And that means creating intentions that make that desire come true. Intentions can be as small as I'm gonna do my morning ritual tomorrow morning, the morning after that, the morning after that. I am choosing to do my morning ritual. And it's really good to say, I am choosing to, I am choosing to, I am choosing to eat protein. Pretty sure I spelled that wrong. Hard to spell on this. Instead of sugar. And every time you feel like eating sugar, you remind yourself, I'm choosing to eat protein instead of sugar. Because you can't eat a bunch of sugar and expect yourself to be healthy again. It's not aligned. But if you have this intention, you start reprogramming your brain every time the craving to eat that sugar comes along. And that's the aligned actions. You don't have to do it all. You don't have to do it perfect. But the more aligned actions you take, the more you are aligned and on a straight line. When you figure out what your aligned actions are and you commit to taking them every day, every time, no matter how you feel, you get on the straight line. And it's going to suck. It's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel unfamiliar. You're going to have a million reasons to get off of it and not take the action. But those are just old, familiar programs. And they're the same programs that are causing the same feelings and making the same genetic impact that your body has. Your body can heal itself we just have to make space and get out of the way. And a lot of it is our biology of belief. Be aware of what you're feeling. But here's the thing. Take the action. You have your intention. Declare the action. Take the action. You've committed to doing a 5 a.m. workout. You've made that deal with yourself. Alarm clock goes off at 4.55. Your brain says, oh, this sucks. I don't want to do this. And you state out loud, I am choosing to work out right now. And you start getting your clothes on. You start doing the workout. Your brain is going to see all this other stuff. You choose again. I am choosing to work out right now. You start doing your twists and your stretch. Your brain is going to say a bunch of other stuff. Oh, it's too early. I'm too tired. This won't work. It's not doing good anyway. You say, oh, breathe it out. I am choosing to work out right now. And you keep repeating that in your mind the whole time you're working out. And even though you might not feel good at the beginning, feeling kind of, uh, at the beginning, by the time you're done, you will have a different emotional state. And guess what? You've created neuroplasticity. You've wired a new program or started wiring a new program in your brain. 
And if you have a positive emotion at the end of it, oh, yeah, proud of yourself, feeling good, a little bit of uh, endorphins, a little bit of accomplishment, and you say, I just finished my workout, and you feel that feeling, you create new programs. So do the action no matter how you're feeling. The feeling will follow, and this allows you to make a new program. Now, here's the really good news. When you're aware of what's going on, you can create new click run programs. So next time the alarm goes off, and by the way, this doesn't happen in a week or overnight, but repeated repetition, it's all about the reps, you can create a new click run program and new beliefs and accountability to yourself. The most important person to be accountable to is yourself. But if you are able to clear your mind and have a coherent brain, and you're able to connect with your 5D self, your true self, your God self, your higher power, your quantum self, your source self, it's there. And you're able to let that come in to your energy body. It's going to accelerate all changes to your physical body. So I'm not going to lie to you, that's like a workout in itself. Spending time and directing attention to the sole purpose of aligning with your God self, source self, true self, authentic self, and allowing that alignment to happen before you throw, go into your day. I spent 10 minutes aligning before this. So I was like, oh man, I got all this stuff. And I want to put this in, this and ah, what do I do at the end? And it's like, okay, time to align. That way when you do it, you can just do it. You're not all worried what everyone's thinking or if you did it right or should have done things differently, and it, it works. But it doesn't work the first time. At least it didn't for me. Man, it didn't even work the first month. It's like daily practice of aligning your inner body with your God self and letting the thinking mind take a break. If you want to tap into your source and you want to heal your inner body quicker, and if you like to use God, no problem. The word doesn't matter. The connection is what matters. I just encourage everyone, don't try to force your word for the higher power on someone else or try to force your belief of how it works on someone else. Just let everyone believe what they believe and know that we all connect to something and that it's good and we let it come in. We're even better. And let's create space for everyone to connect. Coherent heart, elevated and heartfelt emotion. So when you do have a positive emotion, and the positive emotions start off at acceptance. This is a God emotion. This is a higher emotion. Then comes gratitude. Then, oh, oh comes joy. Then enthusiasm. When you are in one of those emotional states, it energizes your inner body. When you are an emotion below acceptance like regret, depression, anxiety, it changes your energy body and it doesn't change it in a good way. So being very aware of your emotions is important. All right, next up, becoming a now being, making the decision, choosing to be completely conscious of this present moment, where you are in space and time, what you're doing in space and time, only think about what you're thinking about. Only think about what you're doing or not doing and be completely immersed in the present moment. One of the healthiest things you can do. That's science. I am going to be spending an hour and a half a day with whoever wants to join me. And not only will I be spending an hour and a half a day with you, but you will have access to all the videos, all the recordings all the worksheets, and you'll have lifetime access to the Inner Alignment and Epigenetic Empowerment course. So this is a course, almost all my courses are free. This one you do have to pay because you're gonna be at there live and I will be doing, you'll be doing a worksheet with it and you'll have lots of resources and takeaways. And yes, it costs $34, but you have lifetime access to that, all the videos. And I suggest if you want to join me live next Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and have lifetime access to all the recordings, just go into the classroom, it'll say, how are you gonna pay your $34? And it'll let you pay it, you pay it to school, and boom, you're in, you'll get an email, and we start next next Wednesday at five o'clock. 
there's so much to teach and to elaborate on. Like we scratched the surface, but now it's time to go deeper, deeper, deeper into it. And by the way, when you do this, you do your homework and get started right away. How to identify your authentic purpose is already in there. And you, before we even start, you will know what your, uh, your purpose is. And it might surprise you that it's different than an outcome. But it teaches you step by step how to find your purpose. So by the time we're working together, you'll know that. That way we can start focusing on your desires. And yes, we're gonna go deep into fasting. I will help you all create your own time eating protocol because fasting and healing your inner body, directly related. Fasting is not just for losing weight. Fasting and healing your inner body, directly related. What did Buddha, what's one thing, the one thing that Buddha, Jesus Christ, and Muhammad, the prophet, all had in common, they all agreed on. Fasting for health, and spiritual well-being. All three of them agreed on fasting. So it's not just to heal your hormones and get healthy. It's actually to have more spiritual alignment. I used it to overcome depression and anxiety and heartbreak after a divorce. So that's what saved me. And it can actually do lots of different things. So this is my shameless um, pitch to say, get this, join me live. You'll have more time to ask questions. We'll actually be working through your workbook together. And you will actually help guide it because your questions will help me map out what I'm going to teach live. Because not only do we have content in it already, but all the recordings from our teachings that we do together will be in here as well. That way you can benefit, benefit for it, from it. And whoever purchases it later or it won't be live can benefit from it also. Namaste. Let's kind of say with a greeting or as an ending. In stillness, we connect to our highest self. In action, we bring that self into the world. Namaste. Namaste is a reminder that your highest potential is already within you. That's your inner body. Step forward and claim it. Breathe deeply, acknowledge your inner peace, and move boldly in the direction of your dreams. Namaste. Namaste is the beginning of the connection, but action is a manifestation of purpose. Whoever wants to join me, and not only will I be spending an hour and a half a day with you, but you will have access to all the videos, all the recordings, all the worksheets, and you'll have lifetime access to the Inner Alignment and Epigenetic Empowerment course.